Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's September 15th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market where across the world of energy, it's been a bit of a down week. But as of September 15th, 2023, Van Eck Low Carbon Energy is currently trading at a volume of 2,230. Invesco Global Clean Energy is currently trading at 21,799. Atlantica Sustainable is at 86,808. Vanguard ESG is currently trading at a volume of 93,324. And Chenier is up to 323. 3,403. But first up in the news, the U.S. just joined a brand new global biofuel initiative. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the initiative at the G20 summit in New Delhi, India this past Saturday, signaling a push for more green energy globally. India will lead the Global Biofuels Alliance alongside the U.S. and Brazil, a move which is aimed to accelerate the shift to net zero emissions targets by promoting plant and animal waste biofuels. Argentina, Italy, Mauritius, and the United Arab Emirates also joined as members of the group, with Bangladesh and Singapore as observers. Next up, the EPA has announced more than $100 million in funding to expand recycling infrastructure and waste management systems across the country, representing EPA's largest recycling investment in 30 years. The EPA has selected 25 communities to receive grants totaling more than $73 million under the newly created Solid Waste Infrastructure for Recycling Funding Opportunity. In addition, the agency is making available approximately $32 million for states and territories to improve solid waste management planning, data collection, and implementation of plans. And sticking with the EPA for a moment, the organization announced an additional $3.6 million in funding for locally focused environmental education grants now available for application under the 2023 Environmental Education Local Grant Program. The EPA will award grants in each of their 10 regions between fifty dollars and $100,000 each for a total of 30 to 40 grants nationwide. To apply, visit epa.gov. But moving into solar energy for a moment, the U.S. Energy Information Administration estimates that the U.S. added 6.4 gigawatts of small-scale solar capacity in 2022, the most ever recorded for a single year. Small-scale solar, also called distributed solar or rooftop solar, grew in capacity from 7.3 gigawatts in 2014 to 39.5 gigawatts in 2022. Small-scale solar makes up about one-third of the total solar capacity in the United States. And up next, Fuel Cell Energy Incorporated and Toyota Motor North America have announced the completion of the first-of-its-kind Trigen system at Toyota's Port of Long Beach operations. The Trigen system, owned and operated by Fuel Cell Energy, produces renewable electricity, renewable hydrogen, and water from directed biogas. Fuel Cell Energy has contracted with Toyota to supply the products of Trigen under a 20-year purchase agreement. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. AstraZeneca has agreed to a 15-year partnership with Future Biogas to establish the United Kingdom's first unsubsidized industrial-scale supply of biomethane gas and is investing in major energy efficiencies in its operations, totaling a commitment of 100 million British pounds. Energy from the biomethane facility will supply AstraZeneca's sites in Macclesfield, Cambridge, Luton, and Speak with 100 gigawatt hours per year, equivalent to the heat demands of over 8,000 homes. 
Up next, Evensol LLC, a renewable energy project developer focusing on biogas and methane mitigation, announced this past week it has developed two renewable natural gas facilities in North Carolina that are now operational. The Foothills Renewables Project in Caldwell County and the Upper Piedmont Renewables Project in Person County convert landfill gas from Republic Services landfills into RNG. The two facilities are the first of its kind for the state. And speaking of new RNG facilities, Enbridge Incorporated and Divert Incorporated are establishing a facility to convert food waste into carbon negative renewable natural gas in Longview, Washington. The $100 million, 66,000 square foot plant will convert 100,000 tons of wasted food annually into RNG by digesters. The plant, expected to be fully operational by the end of 2024, will be able to offset up to 23,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year at full processing capacity. And lastly, a grant provided by the Walmart Foundation aims to help local goodwill organizations acquire the necessary skills, systems, and infrastructure to transform textile waste. There are 25 local organizations that will use the fund to learn how to produce post-consumer textile feedstock that aligns with recyclers' stringent specifications. Staff members will also be educated and trained on the sorting and feedstock preparation process. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for September 15, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and I'll see you back next Friday for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.